Good morning. It is the beginning of day 52 from here to Jerusalem. Oh, it is early. And uh, yesterday was a long day. I did a good bit of walking. I did uh, 16 miles or what is it, 25 kilometers, which is just the, the higher end of uh, what I like to walk. I had said I wouldn't do anything over 25, so 25 it was, and it has brought me to the edge of the Peak District, uh, the edge of the Pennines. And I'm going to start heading in there today. Uh, mm, uh, yeah, good morning. I'm Anya, Sean the Harp is over there, there he is, he's packed and ready to go in his rain gear for uh, a possibly pretty wet day, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we'll be spared, um, so I'm Anya, that's Sean the Harp. And together we are the flat in the harbour and we are walking from West Cork to Jerusalem, Clonakilty in West Cork, Ireland to Jerusalem. Uh, part one of our journeys uh, in 2010 we walked from West Cork to Santiago de Compostela, in 2018 from West Cork to Rome and now we're on our way to Jerusalem over a period of a possible 400 days, could be a bit less, could be a whole, bit, a whole lot more depending on what happens along the way. Um, yesterday we left, uh, we were staying uh, at uh, my friend Steve, Stephen Parland's mother's house and we left there at around 11 o'clock in the morning. It was time to move out and we had a whole thing. His car is one of those two-seaters that uh, really <laughs> is not suitable for harps and people. So he brought me uh, back to, uh, where was it? North Enden in, in, uh, in South Manchester. And I waited for him <laughs> to job as his witness while all uh, before getting onto the Trans Pennine Way again, and we then started walking uh, east once more. So, east it is uh, towards Stockport. So, at the beginning of that, of that, of that uh, route, uh, along that, it was the end of the, the walk along the Mercy. Uh, Mercy River, which of course we've been kind of following more or less since we uh, arrived in Liverpool. It was so good to see Stephen and his mother. Like, <laughs> she calls her Mrs. Doyle. And she is a Mrs. Doyle. Like, I was given so much food. I think I ate for at least three or four. Uh, three or four people, <laughs> three or four people for a day or two. So I had topped up on an enormous amount of food. And uh, yeah, here we are, here we are. Um, walk towards Stockport, which is lovely actually. It's a really nice walk. Um, I was high up on the riverbank. There's a lot of uh, golf courses that we came through. And then the route takes you through a whole way of parks. Uh, Stockport, Stockport is famous again for the period around, uh, uh, in and around the Industrial Revolution. And then of course it is, has a big part to play in the Second World War as well. Uh, Stockport is a place where the Industrial Revolution, you could say, nearly started in England. 
but it became mainly famous for uh, weaving, uh, creation of clock. So the mills, I remember drawing those mills when I was a kid. I'm, gonna, I'm putting a arnica on my caps because they've been uh, getting a bit of a bang in there now yesterday after a day of rest and then you know you have all that energy now all you want to do is like put out the claw weavers which i did it was nice but i can feel them today i can really feel them so yeah for weaving and millinery so hat making there is some insane architecture left over but it seems that a lot of it is being torn down now uh, there was a lot of work ha uh, um, happening in Stockport. Uh, they've got some uh, amazing structures, like a few of the bridges. Some of the bridges there, they, uh, one of the bridges is uh, the longest and oldest, uh, or the, the biggest uh, brick structure uh, in the world at that time. It is, uh, and it there is a train that goes over it. I saw that buildings build underneath bridges. Like you, you see stuff like that in London as well. But when you see it outside of London, it's kind of wild. And then out of Stockport, Stockport then has um, now the the Hat Museum. The Hatton Museum is closed. And it's still after COVID, it hasn't reopened yet. I would have liked to have stopped there, but. Um, I didn't. I just had a. I had a break for something to eat. I went into um, Continental, a Continental Cafe, which was originally Italian. I don't remember the name off my head. There you go. Without not, I'm useless. Um, there's a little Continental Cafe. Stockport is basically you come in. There is a tiny bit of old architecture left, but uh, around the actual center and then the center is this big shopping center and it is flat and it is there isn't much there isn't much there really uh it's just shop cafe Vero, costa coffee you know all that kind of stuff um shopping 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 um uh, shops I have, of course, I'm not really into shops, so that was a that was an odd, uh, odd place to be. But underneath those shops are the bomb shelters, the Second World War bomb shelters, and you can see those as well. It's really, really cheap to go in there. I really don't like being underground, so I didn't go, but I did read up on them. Uh, but I was thinking, you know, lest we forget. We now live in an era where people are very, are often being divided. Um, and what we forget is that we already in history have had many of those instant, instances where we're all very, very divided. And the division is a really bad thing because it, it makes the people stop wanting to work together and it's really important to work together all the time always i i cannot emphasize it enough like you should always stay at the negotiation table as long as you can in my humble opinion uh so lest we forget if you ever are in stockport go see them they are um hot hewn out of the <laughs> Is it? Hang on, that's an alarm. This mess. There we go. They're hewn out of sandstone and there's tunnels there and it shows how people lived uh, during the Second World War and what that meant. Trust me, war is never fun uh, and I'm sure lots of people today can corroborate that. Um, the International Cafe it is now not. Go away. Some people they tease one another, take a pride in themselves, keeping me up. Okay. <laughs> so
so I don't know sometimes I have these alarms go off and I don't even know that I've set them there's two of them in the morning and they just do their own thing it just means it's 7 30 and uh 7 30 in the morning and it's time for me to start moving so there we go um what was I saying oh it's messing with my with my story uh, Stockport. So I left Stockport then, and then you come through a series of, of uh, nature reserves and parks. Um, there is, a, and it's it's really nice walking. Like it's really nice walking. It's all shaded. It is all. Uh, it was Sunday. There were lots of people about. It was lovely. It was really, really, really lovely. But there is the threat of rain the whole time. The whole time. And then you come to Denton, and in order to go to Denton, you have to cross the M60 again. And um, I'm walking there, and it's really, really lovely. You're walking through this beautiful, beautiful grassland with uh, ponies and horses and whatnot. It's really, really beautiful. And then suddenly you start hearing those rocks again. I noticed that the last time as well, like big rods, they just make an awful lot of noise, like an awful lot of noise. And you can hear them. You can often hear them already uh, about a mile, a mile and a half away. So it's one thing that you have those big rods, but that noise is just, I don't know how people live around those really big roads and then as I go over and there's like loads of people come over this footbridge uh, kids and bicycles and stuff and the sides aren't that high like they're they're high enough that you you wouldn't like climb onto them straight away but like I don't know it was it still seemed pretty high to me uh, you know not high enough for me and uh, I met, on the other side, I met um, uh, a man just a little bit older than me. And I said, I hope the, tour, the, the attraction isn't the actual traffic. And he said, do you know what? When they built that road 20 years ago, they told us that, oh no, they were gonna put, um, they were gonna put trees up and stuff and it would all be fine and you wouldn't notice that the traffic was there. I, I, and I said, so how bad is it? He said, especially at night, it gets really, really loud. Like, And what I noticed on that side as well, on the east side of uh, Manchester, that is the route most of these planes come in. So to line up for the runway, they go over that area and it, they just come in. Like, I'm going to check this now. Oh, yeah, they just come in. And you can hear them like it's loud, they're low. So that was Denton, and then you head towards Hyde. Uh, uh, Hyde is tiny, that's that's tiny. That is where, where I was uh, when I crossed the M60. But the, the, the surrounding countryside is just really, really, really beautiful. I think maybe, you know, if more people would walk those roads, uh, it, would, it would be, uh, more people would be familiar with that phenomenon of, uh, of how, how, how loud, how noisy traffic is. I don't know if that would help. Uh, but more walking would be really, really, really good. I haven't really met any walker walkers. Um, in the morning, I saw a guy who was counting birds. He was making notes and counting birds, but I haven't really met any walkers. Walkers. Um, yeah, more beautiful greenery. It's stunning. Like it's a really lovely part. And you would say, like, especially because you're walking out of out of a major city, right? Uh, you'd expect there to be. Um, more industrial stuff and things. I assume that some of the pollution from uh, from works that were done in these in this area 
it could have been pretty bad. So um, maybe maybe there's um, a lot more, um, uh, you know, that they that there is a kind of policy of letting things grow to help a re regeneration of the soil and stuff. I'm not sure there is. I didn't look at that. But it, it was, you know, I needed to get my head down and walk, and that's what I did, and it was a lovely day's walk. And given that I'm in the outskirts of a city, it was pretty good as well. So I've arrived now on the east side of, uh, of Manchester, and literally lots of, is a, there's gonna be a little village. Oh yeah, no, so I better finish the story. And then you get onto an old railway line at the turntables. Uh, and you walk, you walk out of there and then you end up where I am, which is on the, in the, literally at the foot of the, of the Pennines. Um, Glossop is, I think, 10, 15 kilometers from here, no more, Tim Wilson, <laughs> as well. And it is, um, I'm going to be on the, on the south side of the reservoirs and the main road is going to be across. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to hear that road, I'd say, all the time, and especially if I'm going to be higher up than that road. I'll be able to hear it the whole time, but I'll tell you all about that. Not, not tomorrow, I'd say, because I'm not sure where I'm going to stay. Like, there, was, there wasn't much... Uh, to stay around this part either. I'm in, um, what is it called here? It's the thingy in the Premier Inn. They had a, it was pretty, pretty, you know, pilgrim, pilgrim price acceptable. Um, so that's where I am. I thought it'd be nice to just have a night of, uh, of just being being alone, I went for one pint. <laughs> Literally, put it in me and went to bed, because uh, I am tired. I'm more tired than I used to be uh, walking. Uh, it's taking more out of me, and the pack is still heavier than I'd like it to be. On the other hand, I'm feeling really good. Uh, so yeah, Blossop isn't that far anymore. At the end of the day, so at this at, at some stage, I had to turn right off this turntable uh, covered rail track, and I'd already lost kind of the signage for the Trans Pennine Way, and then I realized that uh, I couldn't get off it. I couldn't get off it, um, and I had to climb up the. I decided to just climb up onto the bridge and oh my, I really don't like climbing heights. I, I'm still the same as I always was, like, there's me with the stick, like, cursing a lot, <laughs> trying to get up there. And then I was on this track, so you think you're on this, this bridge with an actual road and it's more, there's people walking behind me and it's more like a, like a like a little track and then the people behind me were gone i honestly don't know where they went there was a car driving like we all ended up together around that bridge so there's me like popping up um but i just wanted to get on with it like i just wanted to walk the last bit and just get there because i was uh, coming off the trail for about a mile to to come here and then i see as i come on to the main road, I see this these people in front of me with a massive big stick of wood and big backpacks and I'm thinking, oh my god, they're long di distance hikers. Well, they weren't. It was Rob and Rachel and Rob and Rachel, they walk around here all the time and they told me in this area there was like, uh, during the Second World War, there was a um, an ammunition factory and the rail line, rail, railway lines and they had and on the hills around here there's a triangle where they had artillery that protected the ammunition uh, factory 
and that whenever the Germans would come over, they could like literally, you know, you would have a destruction point. So they showed me where the ammunition factory sits, like in the middle of this triangle, and then you have a monument on one, one of those hills, and then the other two hills. Uh, you can climb them as well. So that was interesting. They're very local and very aspiring walkers. Loads of deer, loads and loads of deer, loads of deer. <laughs> and they'd been to the graveyard to see his uh, parents' grave. Uh, so yeah, I came here. So it wasn't, in, in a sense, it wasn't a very interesting day. Um, because it was just me with my head down walking. But oh my, how I miss that. Now, I have, like, I've been navigating with my phone, which is fine. But uh, it, it, the roaming is taking a lot, a lot of energy out of it. So I'm going to power it down uh, and try and just walk on the way markers. Because it is pretty well way marked. I think I know where I have to go this morning, and so just try and conserve energy a little bit. Um, I'm sorry now I let those panels go, the solar panels that I had, uh, but once I come to the Netherlands, they can be replaced. They're being replaced by something else, uh, by lighter solar panels. I'm still worried that I'm, I'm carrying too much uh, um, I've been eating away at my at my uh, at the stuff that I've been carrying. Ah, like I'm looking forward to today. There'll be there'll be nature. There there will be nature. Nature is good. So I'm gonna pack up now. Uh, head out of here before eight, I suppose, and see how far I get. If it doesn't rain, I might go on a little bit further. But the chances of rain are really quite big. There is no real shelter between here and where I'm going. So I don't know how to do this. But I'm just going to go. Because that's what I do, right? Uh, I'm okay. I've got lots of nuts. Lots of... Lots of uh, I might get a bit of bread there. There's a Tesco's here. There's even a McDonald's. I might have a McDonald's. Well... <laughs> I've been very, very lucky. I've been, I've, I've rested, I've had help uh, from loads of people. I've, you know, I've been um, given lots of love and lots of, uh, lots of caring for. So I'm okay. I think I can do this. And uh, yeah. Next, next step, I suppose. I don't know, can you hear that road? There's two roads. Yeah, but this part of the world is really, really, really beautiful. I know I've said that before. I also met a guy called Nicholas. We had a chat on the bench, which was really nice. There is something else going on as well, is that um, my body is kind of sore, like especially my lower legs and my feet after yesterday and for the first time in a long, long time, I was thinking, oh, I really don't. I have a thing that I touch my feet every day and uh, touch my legs, my lower legs every day. And yesterday was the first time that I felt, I wish there was somebody else there to do that for me. I never, I've never, I don't ever have, uh, I don't ever feel like that. I'm always okay, like, as in my own space. I don't necessarily like people touching me. But, um, yeah, I'm having a moment there now already for, um, for the past 15 hours or so that I, I could really do with somebody just, you know, touching me. <laughs> Is that weird? I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Um, 
I sent a message to uh, Father Johannes, the, the, the priest hermit I met in uh, Ireland. He arrived in England as well. He, he'd gone to Bangor. He arrived in Liverpool on Tuesday and he's crossing the Severn today uh, into England as well. So, uh, following uh, St. Columbanus and yeah, different routes, different directions. I assume similar, in a sense, similar, similar way. Uh, the other thing is, I'm tired. Uh, the weather is really, really he heavy. A lot of clouds, quite hot. Yesterday I was sweating, and like literally water, like running all over, all over my arms and stuff. Yeah, and I, I think I'm feeling as well that I'm again like in in really uh, in strange territory. I don't know anybody here. I just don't know anybody here. Um, yeah, between the between the the what is it? The lakes. There is a. There is a camping site, so between reservoirs. So I think I'm gonna go ahead there, uh, see if I can get there. I might take some call now before I leave and uh, see if they've got a space for a pilgrim with a hammock. Yeah, yeah. to go. I'm just putting it off now. <laughs> so this is the beginning of day 52. Uh, I'm heading into the Peak District. 52 from here to Jerusalem. Walking to Jerusalem with a heart on your back from West Cork. As you do. Um, I also found that there is um, there's only one ferry a day that goes to Holland and it goes to uh, Rotterdam. Uh, and it's expensive, like it's 200 euros. Um, and it always is that price. Um, so I'm gonna take that out, just that is just the way it is, and that's okay. Yeah, that's really it. I don't know what else to say. I can feel my uh, feet itch. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'll see you tomorrow or the day after. Um, wish me luck because there's a bit of climbing in there. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to today. I'm looking forward to today. Thank you for being here with me. It's always good to have you all along and uh, see you on the other side. Have a good one. Oh, how do you do that? Always the same thing. Yeah. Always.